Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are back with Barry Carl. Excited to have him here as a sexological body worker, also a certified core uh, energetics practitioner, and so much more. Uh, he'll help you heal trauma. We're going to talk about couples. We're going to talk about relationships. And of course, expanding pleasure, listening to your body, your wants, your needs, your desires, your sound, your breathing, your movement, all the above. Barry, why don't you say hello to everyone now? <laughs> Well, wow, that was great. I, I, I want to take you around with me everywhere. Just have you introduce me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Barry Carl. I am a sexological body worker. I'm also a core energetics practitioner and a certified couples counselor. And today, I want to talk about couples and intimacy and how that works and how I work with couples. Perfect. Before we start, just want to point out, I know you're based out of New York, but you work mm -hmm. with couples, uh, people everywhere. Just tell us how we can get in touch with you. Uh, you can get in touch with me through the website heal.me. If you just look, look up Barry Carl, B-A-R-R-Y-C-A-R-L, or um, I'm going to buck the odds here. You can, you can text or actually call me. Um, some people do that. Uh, 917-863-1950 or use my web uh, address, barrycarl at gmail.com. Perfect. Well, pleasure having you here. And yes, today, the conversation of couples. We'll talk about couples. getting intimate, the weirdness of couples, the good in couples, the bad in couples. Where would you like to begin? Oh, gosh. Where do we start? Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, working with a couple is a lot more than working with one person. There's always way more than just two people in the room with with you. It's all of their all of their history and their their connections and everything else. And uh, most often, couples come in hot. I mean, the, the couples when things are going well, two things happen. First of all, nobody wants to rock the boat. You know, mm -hmm. don't bring up anything uncomfortable because like we're in a good patch here. So, so, shh. but then what? when it does, it usually it drags the kitchen sink in with it. So, um, and, and sex and sexuality are a huge part of, um, being in a relationship, uh, yeah. uh, hopefully, of uh, being, being in a couple and, um, People people get together for for all kinds of different reasons and find out about themselves and each other through the relationship. So, uh, couplehood is also a continually evolving excuse me a continually evolving process. Mm -hmm. um, people change, people change, and we have we there's a, a some pernicious stuff in our culture that um discourages change um one of our one of our um pet uh fantasies about about um romantic love is that i will love you forever and you will love me forever and it's just going to always be the same as mm -hmm. it was the day we met and we make these kind of promises to each other which are which are kind of not reality based, but we okay. often do our best to to fulfill them, but we change anyway. Yeah. And and as our bodies change, our needs change, our wants change, our desires change, and uh, couples typically have a very tough time with change, um, because really acknowledging change means that you have to completely recalibrate your your relationship with your partner yeah uh if you've changed if they've changed if you both changed well that's a lot of change to keep up with mm -hmm. and it can happen over small increments over a long period of time or it can happen like boom one day somebody wakes up and they're like i've changed <laughs> yeah and the partner goes uh 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 great uh or, or maybe, ah, no, I forgot to do that. So yeah. <laughs> either way, either way, it causes stress. True. Yeah. So by the time a couple materializes in, in my office, um, they're usually pretty raw. They're, they're, they're in crisis. They're scared. 
Um, and that usually doesn't bring out the best in people. Mm -hmm. So, so people that come in are usually in survival mode. Yeah. You know, they're, they're in some version of survival mode. Um, I had a couple once that they, they were in such deep crisis that they were sitting out in my waiting room and I could hear one of them screaming at the other. Oh. So like, like they were sitting in my office and I had to, I had to like leave my session go outside and ask them to either bring down the volume or, or wait outside until their, their turn came. And by the time, by the time the, their session time rolled around, um, one of them had lost their voice uh, just from screaming at the other one. So yeah. the, 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 I think one of the big mistakes that, that intimacy coaches make and couples counselors make as well is um, they try too soon to get the couple to understand each other and, and get along. You know, they're, they're not in get along mode when they come in. They're every person for themselves mode. They're in, holy crap, this is an emergency mode. And, and they're, not, they're not going to compound. They don't feel safe with each other. And intimacy pretty much demands um, a couple of, of uh, presuppositions. One is trust and the other is safety. And both of those tend to go out the window really quickly uh, when there's upset in a couple. Uh, so the first job, the first job before, before there's any talk about intimacy, because intimacy is, even if they're fighting about intimacy, it's the last thing that they want to be involved in, uh, unless it's some version of makeup sex, but there's still a, a lot of ground to cover before you get to that. Um, makeup means making up for something, right? So all the something has to happen first. Um, so, but the couple in any case, still has to be down-regulated. They have to be calmed down. They both have to feel safe enough with me that they can even look at each other. Uh, you know, whether whether we're talking about intimacy coaching or, or uh, I mean, uh, what am I saying? Couples counseling often kind of boils down to intimacy coaching anyway because um, we are basically, we're not taught uh, how to relate to each other on an intimate level. There's, I don't know of any classes uh, that, that aren't extracurricular that, that people can take um, so that they're, they can communicate successfully with their partner about their wants and needs. And talking about their intimate wants and needs is even scarier than talking about um, money, than talking about how to raise the kids. I mean, that's that's the trifecta with couples. Um, and I'm talking about um, all different flavors of couples, whether, whether you're in, in some sort of formal relationship, uh, you know, sanctified by the state or, or, or not, doesn't matter because the dynamics are fundamentally the same. Um, so when we're talking about intimacy, a lot of the, the, um, the friction that happens between couples, uh, comes through some sort of change and they don't really know each other anymore. Like they thought they did. Sometimes there's a physical change. Somebody gets sick, somebody gets injured. Somebody gets depressed. Uh, all of these have an effect on libido and sexuality. Sometimes uh, there's a libido mismatch. One person wants sex more than the other, and that causes a lot of friction. Uh, but couples really don't know how to uh, address this stuff. It, it, they usually end up fighting. Um, and it's not stuff that gets resolved in a fight. No. What usually happens is is that couples feel farther away from each other rather than closer together after a fight. So I mean that's that's has to do with how they fight, because most couples do. But I'm not 
uh, my function isn't to get people to convince them to somehow get along. It's to help them find compassion for each other and find a way to speak to each other in ways kindly. that the other... <laughs> well, kindly, kind is a good start. Kind is a good start. Kind, we might end up with kind. People, you know, we, we tend to model our relationships on whatever we grew up with, whatever we saw, whatever our parents did is our template. Fortunately, if you had great parents who got along, unfortunately, if you didn't. So yep. what people uh, tend to recreate unconsciously is whatever they grew up with. Now, yeah. we do have other options, yeah. but they take consciousness and they take time. So talking about intimacy, talking about their sex life is hardly ever something that happens in the first session, simply because people are usually on their best behavior. You know, they, 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 want to, they want to look good. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. So it sometimes takes a few sessions for, for them to come off of their best behavior, maybe even have a fight right in front of them. And so it's like, oh, okay, this is what's going on. Okay. Um, but that's not my favorite work to do. That's, that's sort of putting out the flames of a plane crash so people can get out of the plane. I'm talking about taking something good and making it better. This is the part that most couples don't stick around for. Because yeah. when, when couples come in and they go, we have a problem and we got to solve this. Um, I put on my problem solving hat and we, we come up with something and usually whenever the presenting issue, the thing that they came with is um, addressed and hopefully successfully resolved, they don't want to do this anymore. They, they don't want to come and they don't want to you know, open, open their hearts and do the hard stuff. And part of that, part of that is um, the way we're, the way we're uh, enculturated, you know, uh, everybody sort of gets the short end of the stick yeah. because men are enculturated to um, not show their feelings, particularly to deny them when they have them and to never talk about them. The paradox here is that how, and I'm, I'm talking right now about cishet couples, but this can apply to any couple, okay? The, the, in a cishet couple, the woman geolocates her partner by getting into how he's feeling. Yeah. How are you feeling? is one of the more important questions you get asked in the course of a day. True. Because your mate will either be able to be closer to you or farther away from you by how you answer that. The problem is so many men in our culture have not been brought up to be conversant in their feelings. It's like the, yep. the, they're supposed to be these big, solid you know, breadwinning, stolid, uncomplaining, single-minded he-men, heroes. Exactly. Uh, he-men. Yeah. Right. So, and then they get in a relationship and, and all, almost always one of the first things that their partner wants is, is to know how they're feeling. And they're stumped. There's, there's, uh, uh, I, 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 and a lot of misunderstandings arise from that. Like the, the, their partner say, why? Why won't you ever talk to me? Mm -hmm. what, what, why won't you? Why won't you tell me how you feel? Why do you hold out on me? They're not holding out. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do it. So a big part of intimacy work is actually becoming emotionally fluent. And you might not have wanted to hear that. Emotionally fluid. Yes, right. yes. To, to, to develop a vocabulary for mm -hmm. your feelings, to notice that you're having them and give them names. I'm not talking down to you guys. This is a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just being honest. 
So that's, that is a crucial developmental part of being in a couple that has to get caught up because without some form of emotional communication, it's going to be, it's going to be stumbling mm -hmm. at best. And where this particular glitch shows up the most is in intimate conversation in people getting the courage to tell their mates what they like, mm -hmm. what they want, how they feel without their mates somehow feeling criticized or alienated mm -hmm. or defeated or shamed. This, this is, this is a really, it's, it's a very juicy, lovely, delicate process uh and it works and i think it works best in a situation in which a couple can touch each other and speak to each other and have a facilitator present mm -hmm. now that doesn't mean that i'm going to watch a couple have sex that is not what this is about and that's not what i do that having been said, many couples don't have a working knowledge of their partner's erotic selves. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, I offer clients, or prospective clients, actually, is, is a free call uh, before, before we ever get started. And on my website, it says 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um. I try to hold it to that, but I don't stop there if if there's something going on that I can help with. So sometimes my my free introductory calls run, becomes, and, you know, they become a session. Mm -hmm. I I try not to let that happen, but sometimes it does. Uh, I, for instance, I got a call uh, from from a, a lovely young couple, and uh, I don't think they had spoken with each other before the female member of the couple reached out to me. Okay. Because um, all of my, my um, contact had been with her and she didn't mention a partner. So I get the call and there are two people sitting there. And so I'm, oh, okay. Hi. We can, we, hi. hi. <laughs> we, Hello, we, yes. We can, we can do this. What's your name? You know, um, but when I say they hadn't talked to each other, I don't think that she had divulged the nature of the call or what she wanted uh, to her partner. So she sandbagged him. Wow. On the call, on the call. And she was very charming and she was also very direct. And she said, well, uh, you know, I said, what, what, are you, what are you hoping for? You know, what, what, what do you feel like you need help with? She said, well... I've realized that that I'm kinky and and I want to explore that and and my partner doesn't. Wow, and he's and, like ah, ah. Yeah, exactly. I looked from from her to him, and he was just like, mm -hmm. okay. He was just like, I, uh, uh, uh. so that that got a little that got a little complicated mm -hmm. uh, because they had never spoken about this before. You, you'd How think that there there might have been a conversation about this yeah. before the call, but knowing couples, that didn't surprise me. It okay. it made me sad because I knew that what was going on over on the other side of that was tremendously difficult. Yeah, and Not feeling comfortable enough to talk to you and partner to express your wants, your needs ahead of time. Like it's, yeah, it's sad, but it, I'm it hoping is. there is progress. Like, uh. Um. I got to tell you, I got to be honest, we, we got through the call, uh, but they never booked a session. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't it didn't seem like a real propitious, you know, yeah. uh, opportunity. Like if they're not talking to each other. Yeah. How are they going to talk to all, a third party? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be even tougher with a third party. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's I, I don't know that it's necessarily easy yeah. with with a, a, a third party. 
Um, once again, it's it's not different from individual work in that a relationship has to be built. There has yeah. to be some level of trust. Um, it's sometimes it's tough being an individual therapist working with a couple because the the same sex partner uh, feels like he he in this case has an ally mm -hmm. and the female partner uh can easily feel ganged up on yeah i've i've noticed the same thing in reverse when it's a female therapist and a hetero couple mm -hmm. that the that the female woman feels like she has an ally and the man feels ganged up on um, so impartiality uh, that may sound cold-blooded, but uh, it's really no. necessary. It's it, nobody. It, one of the one of the um, cornerstones of, of this work is that nobody gets more than fifty percent of the blame in a couple, mm -hmm. unless one partner is like a serial a secret serial murderer, or, mm -hmm. or you know. Uh, has borderline personality disorder or something like that. Uh, people contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, even if they don't see their contribution. And even if the incident that brings them to me was the 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 act of one person, mm -hmm. um, they're always or nearly always contributing factors uh, that that have to be kind of combed through to clear the space for them to be able to feel safe and trust each other, which is ultimately what we're going for. You know, when, when, when couples come to me for work, um, they almost always take their chairs and set them straight. So they're both looking at me and neither of them are looking at each other. And I usually make them turn their chairs so they're talking to each other and I'm just in the room. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a switchboard. Yeah. You know, the, the couples, you know, you'd think that couples, you know, talking to each other would be a matter of routine. And yeah. it often is when it's like, you know, a dog's and eggs and a quart of milk. Um, this stuff gets hard. Mm -hmm. This stuff gets hard. Um, we're all carrying shame uh, to one degree or another. And sometimes we let that just take us underground. Sometimes we um, labor to contour yep. what we say to each other, how we say it, uh, and usually get it wrong when when your partner's scared yeah when you're scared some part of you is in survival mode yeah there there was a a, a great self-help book that was written in the 80s by a guy named jerry jampolsky and it was called love means letting go of fear okay and he said that love and fear cannot coexist simultaneously in the same space. Wow. You, so what, what we're doing with, with intimacy work, mm -hmm. aside from, from guided and facilitated touch and talk, is leaving the fear state and entering a place of expansion and love and caring and gratitude for the other. But that doesn't happen, you know, like that. I wish it did. Yeah. If it did, I'd, I'd give it to everybody. Aww. <laughs> You're so kind. Who wouldn't want that? Yeah. All of us. Come on. Let's live our best life. Be the happiest we can be and love one another. But you also have to learn how to love 
in ways that they want to be loved, right? So you have this also about compromise. There's a lot with couples and compromise, right? People compromise feel they don't, they shouldn't the have to thing. give up or change, but compromise is not change. What, what would you define that as? Well, I don't, I don't know. I, th I think that that compromise can be can be change. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're the one who's being asked to modify or change something for your partner, yeah. But it also has to agree with your basic nature. Change or a compromise. Let's just use the, the, that word. Compromise uh, is great to the point where it uh, puts you out of integrity with yourself. I mean, there are certain points past which yeah. uh, one may be able to compromise or one may not be able to. And we need to be in reality about that too. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're so busy being the perfect partner that you lose yourself, what do you gain? Yeah, true. Well, thank you for enlightening us, for being here. We still have two minutes left, Barry. Um, two minutes? Did, yeah, go figure, right? Things no, we, can, quick. we can probably cure cancer. I know, right? <laughs> what are we going to do with our two minutes? Well, you're going to tell us how we can reach you. We know that you offer a free consultation, a free call. Um, okay. Maybe just share some of the other services you provide. Well, that, that free call doesn't carry an obli any obligation. Yep. I want to make that really clear. Um, mm -hmm. You're you're not going to get um, you're not going to get hit on. You're not going to get hit on for money. You're not going to get hit on to sign up for something. Uh, I don't do that. My the reason for the call is for us to get to know each other a little bit mm -hmm. and see if we can work together. Yeah. The, there's there's no. Um, other way that i know of except you know being in the same space yeah uh, to figure that out so in so far as is possible um you know my time is precious your time is precious let's let's figure out if if we're a good fit uh before we commit time and resources sounds like a plan barry carl how can I we reach so. you you can reach me at heal.me Type in my name, Barry Carl, B A R R Y C A R L. Or you can email me at barrycarl at gmail.com. Or you can text or call me at 917 863 1950. Beautiful. Well, thank you for being here, for talking uh, about couples and what we have to go through. And to know that there's help, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Compromise. We got a lot done today. Barry. I hope so. Thank I hope you. so. I think Thank so. You, you have a fantastic day and looking forward to the next time we get to speak. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.